Click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, today we will know about what is recoverability and the situation where we can produce and recover the schedule and also we will talk about the cascadeless schedules. Suppose that if two or more transactions are involved in a schedule and in such situation that the atomicity property must be preserved for the transaction so that the transactions need to abort it or roll back. Now if such situation occurs and we can recover a transaction from being to the inconsistent state to an consistent previous state then we can say that we are achieving the recoverability. That means if Ti is preceding Tj and the Tj is reading a value that Ti is using, then Tj must be aborted if Ti is having some problem in the transaction. So now we can decide the recoverability on this condition. Say if Ti is preceding Tj and Ti has made a right statement that Tj is reading that value, that means the right on ti is being read on tj now ti is go for an abort so now tj must be aborted so that the recoverability is satisfied so this implies that tj also must abort so this is one known as a recoverability now to recoverability satisfy for two transactions, we need to produce recoverable schedules. Now let us talk about what is a recoverable schedule. A schedule on which the transactions can be made in this way so that the recoverability condition can be satisfied, then we must declare them as recoverable schedules. Now suppose take the consideration of this example. The transaction T1 is reading the value of A and then it is modifying the value of A. Now transaction T2 is reading the value of A. Now again transaction T1 is reading the value of A. And now it is reading the value of B. Now suppose we are introducing with these transactions one more thing that is commit option. Say that T2 has committed immediately after the read operation. So what happens that T1 is reading and writing the value of A and T2 is reading that updated value of A that T1 is mentioning. Now it is committing the transaction that means T2 has read the value of A and the value of A that is stored with the transaction T2 is the value that is updated by T1. But till now we have known that T1 has not committed. Say T1 commit after the total transaction has committed. So now what happens that till now this updation is not being made to the disk. So after this statement and after reading the value of A, T1 fails for some reason. So now after this read A, T1 fails. So what happened that like the durability and atomicity constraint that we are having that T2 is having a value that is say A equals to 900 and A equals to previously was 1000. So the T1 is restoring A equals to 1000 while T2 is restoring A equals to 900. So now it is committing the value that is 900 which is being updated by A but not written back to the disk. So T1 is storing the previous value 1000 while this 900 becomes erroneous data and T2 has stored this one. So by the recoverability that we have suggested that if TI is preceding TJ and TI write is being TJ's read, then if TI aborted or killed for some reason, then TJ should also abort. Now that T2 has already committed the transaction, we cannot abort T2. So such schedule where this committed exactly after the reading of the writing part of the preceding transaction, then we can say it as non-recoverable schedule. So now this non-recoverable schedule can only make as a schedule that is 
a recoverable schedule with this following condition. Say if Ti is preceding Tj and the Ti's read is followed by this write on this Tj, then nothing will happen. But if Ti is preceding Tj and Ti's write will be followed by Tj's read on the same data item, then we must say that any commit on Tj will be appear after Ti's. Now the commit on T2 will happen after this commit on T1. So now Ti commit will be followed by Tj commit. So in that way we can produce an recoverable schedule from these two. So the same schedule if we are maintaining just within commit with this ultimate one or this T2, then we can produce a recoverable schedule. Now even if the schedule is a recoverable one, there is one more problem that is in cascade rollback. Now let us consider another example to exemplify what is in cascade rollback. So T1 is reading a value of data item A and B and writing that value of A. Now T2 is using to read the value of A that has been written by T1. Now again it is remodifying the value for this T2. Now T3 is reading a value that is being updated by T2. Now that T1 has written and then T2, then T2 has written and then T3 is reading the value. Now what happens that if some problems after T1 fails? No, now it is happening that T1 is fails. So what will, the T1 is reading T2, T2 is reading T3. So now T2 needs to be aborted and all of this previous function will need to abort by T3. T2 needs to be aborted all the preceding function and following T2 obviously needs to be aborted because it is the failing transaction. So what happens for a single transaction's failure, there are several transactions we need to be rolled back. So this is known as a cascading rollback where for a transaction that is failed and the write on this transaction needs several transactions to roll back. So if we are defining this cascading rollback, then we can say that if Ti and Tj, the Ti precedes Tj and then Ti is having a write and Tj is happening with this read, then we can say that Ti's commit must appear before the read of Tj. If I have committed after this write, that means if the commitment was here, then we can say that this read A will be committed with this write A. So the T2 and T3 need not to be rolled back because this data has been already saved and T1 is having an updated value of A which T2 and T3 both are having. So now this commitment of this particular transaction TI will be preceding the TJ's read. So now TI commit will be followed by Tj's read. Then such schedules we call as an cascade-less schedules. So a cascade-less schedule is a schedule which follows the commit on the write operation and then followed by any transaction that tries to read the value. Now cascade schedules are obviously recoverable schedules because any commit after this TJ will happen up here and TI commit is there. So but not the recoverable schedules are always cascadeless but the vice versa is true. So that is all for the recoverability on transactions. Thank you for watching this video. Stay tuned with Ikira and subscribe to Ikira.